but your God. It says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So don't worship yourself on Instagram. Some of you are going on Instagram so much, you're worshipping yourself. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Some of you are swearing like gangster rappers. Don't be swearing like gangster rappers. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath day, Sunday, is a day of holy to give to God. Honour thy father and my mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord giveth thee. Some of you have no respect for the police, you've no respect for law and order. You've no respect. Thou shalt not kill. Some of you are violent and angry at home. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Some of you sleeping around when you shouldn't be. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't sleep around. Thou shalt not steal. Don't be stealing from work. Don't be stealing from college. Mike, Mike. Don't talk too loud on the microphone. Yeah, it's on there, yeah. Thou shalt not steal. No stealing from work. No stealing from college. No stealing from university. No stealing at, at home. No stealing. Thou shalt not steal. Have you stolen this week? Have you stolen this year? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Have you abundant? He wants you to have abundant life. Is it abundant life sat in your bedroom smoking wacky backy? That is not abundant life. That is a wasted life. Your parents didn't give you money to spend on wacky backy. Jesus Christ came to die on that cross and shed his blood for you. He wants to touch your life and fill it with joy and peace and hope. He wants to fill you with love. He wants to fill you with his goodness. Jesus says, I have come to give you life abundantly. A more abundant, abundant life, abundant joy, abundant peace, abundant hope. Abundant grace, abundant goodness. So why do you smoke wacky barky? Why do you waste your money on wacky barky? Jesus is better than wacky barky. Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and He can fill you with joy and peace. He's better than Paul. No, it's fucking not. He's better than porn. He's better than drugs. He's better than sex. I'm going to stop you right now. Sex outside of marriage is no good. Jesus says he wants to give you life. There's a lot of powerful people in high places who want to deceive us. But sound, the sound faith is Jesus Christ. He doesn't deceive. He is the beautiful Savior who tells the truth. He's the beautiful saviour that gave his life for us. He doesn't deceive us. He tells us the truth. He said that he's the lamb that's come to shed his blood for us. And so here Paul is warning that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So don't be deceived by the media. Don't be deceived by the world. Don't be deceived by all that goes on today. But remember that Christ is the truth, that Christ is the way, and that Christ is the one that can save us, that Christ is the one that can speak into our generation. Christ is the one that can speak into our times. Christ is the one that can deliver us in these days. Christ is the one that can help us. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him, in all things, which is the head, even Christ. But speaking the truth in love, 
We don't condemn people, but we speak truth in love, but we speak the truth. We have to speak the truth, because the truth will set us free, the truth will open our eyes, the truth will show us what is the right thing. You cannot have love without truth. A lot of people today, when they go on these Trump marches, anti-Trump marches, they want to be open-minded, but they want to be open-minded without the truth. They want to love without the truth, but you can't have real love unless you have truth. Truth and love go together. If you say to a little kid, don't go near the fire, you're telling them the truth and you love them. Truth is so important and love is so important, but truth and love go together. And Jesus showed truth and love at the cross. He was truthful. Just, got, just recording now. So it's He shed his blood for your lies. He gave his life for your lies. He shed his blood. Are you Muslims? Yes? yes. Nice to see you. Have you read the Quran? What's that? Surah 634. Do you know what it says? Do you know what it says? It says this My word cannot change. That means the Bible cannot change. And why is there 64 different versions of it? Well, in Surah 634, it shows you that if you read the chapter, it's about prophets and he's saying the prophets words cannot change now the prophets is the bible but, uh, uh, why are there like 72 different versions? i'm just asking why are there like 72 different versions of the bible we've got the revised standard version yes the new standard version the king james version it's just a bit confusing okay let me explain to you they're in english yeah yeah when you translate in english there's going to be different translations so where's the original one yeah but we have when you talk about the Greek and the Hebrew, original, that's not changed. In fact, if you read the Quran, it actually says that the Bible's not changed. Can you read Greek? I, I'm not an expert in Greek. I know a little bit of Greek, but at my church, we have... Excuse me, let me... Let, at, my, at my church where I go, we have a guy, and he can read Greek fluently. Is there a Greek Bible? And you can talk to him on the phone now. Is there a Greek Bible? I'm just asking. There are, yeah, the Greek manuscripts. You know, like, you've got imams. Yeah? Yeah? When we're trained, I'm like, I've been trained like as a priest. You, when, you're, when you're doing a sermon, you have to know a little bit about Greek. You see? Alright, but, but what about Uthman? Have you read about Uthman? If you read Bukhari, if you read Bukhari, if you read Bukhari, if you read Bukhari, it says, that Uthman burned Qurans. Do you know about that story? Yeah, but it's not quite as you're saying. Maybe you should buy the Christian values of fellowship, charity. Maybe get a bit of money. If you, if you, if you read Bukhari, it says that Uthman burnt the Qurans. They were. Maybe some other time we've got to go back to So it shows you the Qurans changed. All right. God bless you, yeah? and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Rivers of joy will flow in your heart. Rivers of peace will flow in your life. Rivers of hope will flow in your life. Your life will change and there will be peace and power in your life. You'll move in a different way with hope and joy in your life. If you confess that Jesus 
Christ is Lord. And you turn away from the drugs, you turn away from the sex, you turn away from the gambling, you turn away from the pride, you turn away from the worldliness, you turn away from political correctness, and you turn to Jesus. When you turn to Him, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Rejoice, and again I say, rejoice. There is a joy and a peace in Christ. A joy that you can have. A hope that you can have. The rivers of God, the joy of the Lord will come and fill you. The joy of the Lord will give you strength. The joy of the Lord will give you peace. He'll give you hope and grace and love in your life. If you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that He died for you. You can go to church and you can go every week but it doesn't mean to say that you believe Him in your heart. You can be seen as a good person, but it doesn't mean to say that you believe Jesus in your heart. The devil believes Jesus, but not in his heart. He didn't change his life. But you need it. You need His love in your life. You need the joy in your life. You need the hope in your life. You need the peace in your life. And He will give you the love and peace he will bind up your broken heart. If you are lost and broken today, there is hope for you today. But He will come and comfort you, for He is the God of all comfort. Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He will give you rest and peace in your heart and life if you trust in Him. But if you trust in political correctness, you're going to go to hell. Political correctness is not biblical correctness. It's not what the Bible teaches. Scotland needs the Bible, not political correctness. Political correctness comes and goes, but the Word of God is forever and ever. Chairman Mao in China had a day of burning and he burnt all the Bibles. Today, there are 70 million Christians in China. Scotland's political correctness will change, but the Bible will last forever. Trust in Him now while you can. Trust Him today. It's the only way for you. The only hope. Don't pull out political correctness. It will smash your mind. You need to be renewed in the Word of God. You need to be renewed in the Word of God. You need to be renewed in the Word of God. In the Word of God. In the Word of God in your life. Are you alright, mate? What's up? Well, it's called democracy, guys. Get used to it. God, it's called democracy. People died. People died in Scotland for you to have free speech in me. God bless you. Have a lovely day, sir. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely day. God bless you. No, I'm here to preach. Yes, sir. He gave his life. He died for you. God bless you, sir. Have a lovely day. Jesus died for you. He gave his life. Don't swear like against the rapper, sir. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He gave his life for you. He shed his blood for you, sir. He gave his life for you. He died on the cross. He died you. And gave his life for you, sir. Whatever you believe, I respect, sir. God bless you. Jesus Christ died on that cross. And he shed his blood for you on that cross. He died for you on that cross. And if you trust him, you can know his peace. The only one who trusts you. There is power, power, oh wonder-working power in the dark of the land. There is power, power, oh wonder-working power in the blood of the land. Scotland, come back to Jesus. He loved you. I died on that cross for you. I trust him on a cross, sir. He died on a cross for you. Shedding blood. Are you believe in Jesus? What do you believe in? So, is there a meaning to this world? Is there a meaning to this world? Why are you with meaning every day? Yeah, but you have with meaning every day. Do you, do you believe the such thing as love? Do you believe the such thing as love? Love. I don't believe in love. Yeah, but how do you get love from evolution? Do you believe in evolution? Do you believe in evolution? Do you believe in evolution? 
Such tenderness for us that he would die for you and me, that he would shed his blood for you and me. How much have you lied? How much have you done wrong? And yet he died on that cross for you. He hung on that cross for you. You laugh, you mock, you do these things, but he died for you on that cross. He died for you on that cross. And he hung on that cross for you. Every lie that you have done, every swear word that you uttered, every bit of anger that you had, he hung on that cross for you and shed his blood. Don't come under. It's a small camera, really, isn't it? Go on. It's good to see you anyway. Hi, folks. We're in Manchester today sharing the gospel and uh, about to preach today, so uh, pray that God will bless us and be with us. Today to share with you about the gospel about Jesus Christ that he is the Savior and I just want to show you the madness of unbelief you know you say well I don't believe there's a God I don't believe that there is a God well did you know that all the information in the world is not as much as the information in DNA that's how much DNA information packs in. No way could a mind, uh, no way could chance produce that DNA. That DNA could have only come by God. It could have only come by a mind. The madness of unbelief. If I was just to put a load of sticks on the floor, how much chance would that write something? 
If I threw sticks on the floor, would it write anything? No. That is unbelief. But a mind wrote the DNA. A mind produced the DNA. And that mind is God. And God is a holy God. It says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. God is a holy God. He's a holy God. And because He's a holy God, He has given us the Ten Commandments. Don't lie. Have you ever lied? Have you ever lied? Don't steal. Have you ever stolen? Don't commit adultery. Have you ever committed adultery? Not today. Don't curse the name of God. Have you ever cursed the name of God? We've all made mistakes. And that's why we become guilty. He says, all fall short of the glory of God. You got any questions, sir? All fall short of the glory of God. But God didn't leave it there. God didn't just say, I'll condemn everybody. He had a plan, and that plan was to save people. And he came in Jesus Christ. And it was prophesied that he would be arrested. It was prophesied that he would be taken. It was prophesied that he would die on a cross. It was prophesied that they would crucify him. When he went on that cross, he was dying on that cross for sinners. He hung on that cross and shed his blood. And that is the only way to be reconciled to God. That's the only way to know God. The only way to know God is by that cross. On that cross, Jesus Christ gave his life. On that cross, Jesus Christ died for your sin. He died for your sin on that cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Have you got a question, sir? Yeah, God bless you. Are you Muslim, sir? No. Christian, yeah. Why have you forsaken me? And he hung on that cross and he died as a savior. And we can be reconciled to God. We can know God through that blood. That blood makes the way to heaven. That blood makes the way to God. Without that blood, we're dead. Without that blood, we have no hope. Now you might say, Jay, I'm an atheist, and I can prove that your faith is wrong. Prove it. If you're an atheist, come and prove it. I can, I can silence you within one minute if you're an atheist. Come and prove it. If you're an atheist, there is no God. DNA has information in it. Only information comes via a mind. Mind produces information. And in the DNA, there is more information in the DNA than the whole world. That's how much information is in the DNA. It's packed full of information. Who put it there? Who put that information there? It demands an intelligence. An intelligence put the information in the DNA. You could put all the information of the world on a pinhead. That's how much information is in the DNA. That's how powerful it is. We cannot say that we're here by chance. We cannot say we're here by chance. Have you got a question, sir? Do you believe in evolution? Uh, give me some evidence for evolution. Huh? Okay. Okay. So is that your is that your evidence for evolution? I'll give you some evidence against it. You can give me some for it. Dinosaur fossils. Okay, dinosaur fossils. What is evolution? What is it? Yeah. Random mutation. Random mutation and natural selection. Yeah. Now, can chance produce mind? If I throw some sticks on the floor right now, what are the chances of those sticks saying, I love you? One in a million. One in a million. So how come, if I threw some sticks on there, and the chances are it won't go, I love you, yeah? 
But something more complex than that, a sentence, is the DNA in our body. There is more complexity. There's more complexity in the DNA than that simple sentence. And yet that simple sentence could not be created by chance. Would you agree? Well, this depends how you define chance. Okay. Before the beginning of the universe, what existed? Nothing. Nothing. And when we say nothing, we mean nothing. Yeah? So, can nothing produce a sentence like, I love you? If there's nothing there, if, if, if there is nothing there, can it produce a sentence called, I love you? So, so if there's nothing in the universe, how did there was nothing, how did it produce something more complex than a sentence called DNA? DNA is three billion bits of information in the DNA, right? So it's infinitely more complex than a simple sentence. And yet, if you're saying there's nothing at the beginning of the universe, and you're saying that nothing could not well, create a sentence... Physics, though, it's just a kind of complex state we can't understand. It's a... I mean, it's the, 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 the latest data suggests that it was uh, not nothing per se, but like a quantum mechanics string theory, kind of like, you know, kind of chaotic state with, I don't know, how many dimensions. Who, who's Valencian? Valencian? Yeah. One of the greatest, greatest physicists in the world today. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says that the universe had a beginning. Yeah. Well, it had a beginning. If it had a beginning, well, the law of thermodynamics. What's the law of thermodynamics? The law of thermodynamics shows us that we are the beginning, and that is the main. That is the one of the assured laws that we have. So, if the universe had a beginning, it must have been that there was nothing there. If there was nothing there. How did something come from nothing? Now, uh, you cannot get complexity from nothing, let alone a sentence. But the DNA. Yeah, but what's that doing? Isn't so, so if you're trying to prove the existence of God, God is just an abstraction of something that we can't understand anyway. So, what's the point of trying to? Have you heard of the pre-Socratic philosophers? No. Pre-Socratic philosophers discussed this topic. They said either the universe had a mind or no mind. And throughout this is what said for let me just explain. So throughout the centuries we've discussed this, and even today we've not got rid of that question. It's still here. So science can answer certain questions, but there are philosophical questions that are still around that will not go away. And it's more intelligent to believe a mind created the complexity of the DNA than chance, than nothing. Maybe, well, well, I mean, I believe in the pantheistic notion of God, which is that it's just the universe. So you believe in a God? Yeah, the pantheistic notion. This pantheistic... Not the, not the not the uh, Christian not the theology, not all the, yeah exactly, not all the, not okay. all the theological, okay. not all the stuff that comes with it. How do you know this God? Just from my life experience. People in my life and experiences and seeing a sky and life. It's nature, it's nature. Well, the Bible, the Bible says by nature we can know God. It says God we is can, nature. We can, have, we can have some kind of knowledge of God. Nature is God and God is nature. Okay. Okay. But when you say pantheism, is this this God personal? Well, in the sense of... Can you have a relationship with this God? In the sense of seeing the nature, yeah. Well, well, nature, yeah. a person, does not a person love and communicate? Well, yeah, human beings as well. So does this, God, nature. does this really? God that you talk about as a pantheist, does this God love and communicate? Yeah, yeah, through people. Through people? Yeah, because so, we are nature. So, so God is nature now? And so there's no difference between God and nature, both the same. Well yeah, there's things to change your words if you want to use that. So is God a spirit? Or is God material? If you want to put it in those can I just finish can I can I just finish the conversation? No, 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 he's asking no I'm having a conversation with this guy, yeah. You have to, you're saying that God is nature and I just asked the question, is God spirit? Well, if you want, it depends on what, what, what do you mean by spirit? Well, Jesus, you mean matter, Jesus, matter, Jesus, matter, Jesus, no, like Jesus says we must worship God in spirit and in truth. Yeah. So there's a differentiation between God and nature. Uh, on, the Jesus, Jesus. on the Jesus point, like, he was a, he was a great philosopher and a great man. But...
do I believe it's supernatural? No, and I've read the Gnostics and all the rest of it. I know uh, kind of yeah, the Nag there's the Nag Hamdi, which is the theme. Uh, the true teachers of Jesus, i.e. not like the religious. Uh, what century were these written? You, you read about the, the Hamadi? Yeah, 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 yeah. You read them? Yeah, I've read them, yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you compared them with the Gospels? No, I'm not trying to if you read If you read these Gnostic Gospels, which I've read, yeah, I've got a list of them here. If you read them and compare them to the four Gospels, they don't mention very, very little, very, very, very little. It's not actually anything about Jerusalem. If you read the four Gospels, they mention in detail all the places in Jerusalem. The four Gospels are really the first century and, and the, the Gnostic Gospels are the second. Can I just make one point? point. We found manuscripts in Egypt, yeah, the Gospels, in ancient rubbish huh? And the, the Gnostic Gospels are written in uh, small, small handwriting, I think it is. It's one of the, one of the, I can't remember exactly. But they're written in a newspaper style of that time. And the four Gospels are written in a style that was seen as authoritative, to, 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 to be read authoritatively. Yeah. So, we, I guess to know it, that's the problem with religion. Religion is too much to be And it's too, it's like, a, it's like the ultimate kind of thing. Uh, almost patriarchy, it's like someone's father figure, and everyone else has to follow everything he does. Okay, you said you're a pantheist. Jesus came down and was good because I can make up cheap cheap ones. I don't have to listen to you all men and feel so simple. But how do you know you're not going to do it? Oh, yeah, sure. Good to go. If, 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 Don't show love, don't 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 be gooey like these Christians that we and then when he saw a horse, no no what he was saying, he was attacking Christianity for homing in on love. And then he and then he goes and hugs this horse because he felt so there was a contradiction there. I'm not like thinking this is a big problem, I just like the aspect of philosophy which is you just have to accept it. So like what it is, you've got one point, it's the most right eternal materialism, don't do eternal which is there is no current. Is your God a God of judgment or not? Is he going to judge? 
Okay. So it'll be whatever, it'll be chaos for so, you to So you're saying that your God doesn't judge. Now, in the Bible, Paul says there's going to be a day of judgment. Jesus said, I like that. So if there's going to be a day of judgment according to Jesus, then you have to be worried about it. God got mad in the beginning. Well, for the sake of argument, if there is a God, of the God I'm on about, right? And you come from the God. I will come back to you in a second. You can have a discussion with me in a second. But if there is a day of judgment, just for the argument's sake, how are you going to stand on that day of judgment? And, and, and would you go to heaven? What? Have you ever lied? Have you ever done anything? Yeah, yeah. So when God judges you, how do you know you're going to lie? How do you know? Well, my, 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 my view is, right, is that Jesus took my judgment. And he is the righteousness of God. He died on my way. And if I I believe on him. I'm, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. So I have to live a good life. But I'm not facing it on my own. He gave his life to Christ. So I'm talking to this guy. We can talk to you in a second. No, we can have a dialogue, but I just want to talk to this guy. Yeah, no, no I'm not trying to catch you. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I'll, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. Talk to him. I promise you, in one minute, one minute, Jesus Christ died on my cross. Now, there's evidence for that. There's no evidence for your position. Okay. It's not going to judge. It's not going to judge. People judge each other. That's all I'm saying. Right, you can come in. God, are you a Muslim? What are you, an atheist or a Jew? You're, you're a Jew. Jesus says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In the Old Testament, God used those terms. God is true. God is the way. You know, when, when, when God led the Jews through, when he led them through the desert, finding the manna, do you remember? Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. The Passover and the bread is all about God, it's about the problem. So, so, so what I'm saying is that Jesus used the terms that God used for himself. In fact, in fact, it was so annoying to many Jewish people at the time of Jesus that they wanted to kill him for blasphemy. set of laws for a certain people to, to abide in. 
Right, left side, 15 degrees. I'll get it for you, I'll get it. Are you from the front? Uh, Jesus came down, he said, uh, I will bring war, uh, not peace. Is that Isaiah 53? I bring peace onto earth. He's made, made He didn't bring peace. For thousands of years of punishment. Oh. You made a good question. Yeah. It's a good question. So I'll just show you that I'm getting on here to preach it again. He was asking about how can there be a new, new covenant. But I was saying that when we say new, it's coming out of the old. In other words, the Old Testament was prophesying and foretelling something that would yeah, yeah, most of it's symbolic, but it's still okay. changed. Okay. Well, well, yeah, changed. So, so you're from a Jewish background, yeah? Yeah. Okay. yeah. As, a, as a Jewish person, how do you explain this? The prophet Isaiah. He is despised and rejected the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have hid every one of his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of his own. How do you explain that as a Jewish person? Listen, who wrote it? Isaiah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, oh yeah, you, you're out of here, Chop. Oh, they're coming out to play today. Oh yeah. I, I saw Elton a few times. Yeah, I've just been on the phone to him. Oh yeah, he's always asking. Yeah. He said he saw you recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've only just arrived about half an hour ago. And Jason interviewed me. He wants. Yeah. And it says exactly what it says. And he wanted me to help this camera for a while. So. He wanted me to hold this camera. Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Hiya, Julie. Yeah. You're right. It's just nice to see you. Love you. Yeah. I'm all right. You're all right. Cold, you? June, you know Isaiah uh, 53, yeah. where it says he was bruised for our iniquity. Yeah. Just like is that. That is in the Bible, and it's in the Hebrew Bible. Yeah, it's, 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 it's there. He That's says, what they're waiting for, actually. He's saying, why is there a new, a new Testament? And I'm saying, well, it's the Old Testament. The Old Testament. The New Testament. The Old Testament. Because they kept turning from God. Yeah, but they kept turning Yeah, but in the end, if you look at the end of the Old Testament, you look at the last chapter, and he says, he says, you will not see me again. Not seeing you again, Jerusalem, until you repent, until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I will dash your sin, dash your sin against you. You'll be healed, mate. The church of the Lord is in Christ. You have to go through your own sin and go through your own torture. And how did you try? How did you torture yourself? No, you're going to go through all the sins that you've committed. For okay, if that's true, why did they add the, what, if that is true what you're saying? Okay, but, but, but if that is true what you're saying, that we have to atone for our own sin, why in in uh, in the Old Testament was the day of atonement? Why do you have to be on a ladder to say all this? There was a day of atonement because I was preaching and it's come to talk. Well you should be coming to everybody's level. Who says? Who after. says? Okay, if you say that. <laughs> What do you believe you said? Well, I believe uh, that like this day of atonement, we're all going to have a day when we think about the year, about all our sins, and pray, pray to God to save us. Jesus, so you Jesus is not God. You Jesus said he was never God. He's not the Son of God. You said so. Do you say so? Bible Show me in the Bible. But you're saying Jesus is God. Show us in the Bible. Will you just say so? Because it says so in the Word of God. 
You said Jesus is a mention of that he's not Jews God. Know Messiah will okay. come one day. Jesus is not the Messiah. Okay. You said Jesus you isn't know God. Let me show you. Jesus isn't God in the Old Testament. So. Okay, who's this? This is Messiah. Isaiah, five books of Moses. Isaiah 9. I'm talking yeah. about the original, original, original. No, five books of Moses. Let me finish. Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 9. Yeah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Let's talk about the Messiah. Jesus. It's Jesus. How can he know? What does the Spirit just say? The Old Testament. The Old Testament says you'll never know until he comes. He came. He's supposed to be Elijah the prophet. He's supposed to be Zimri. Okay. John the Baptist. Was John the Baptist a prophet? John the Baptist was not a prophet. Well, in his time he was accepted as a prophet. He got, he got his head cut off. By who? Not by the Jews. No, he was. He was accepted by the, the Jews as a prophet. No, he was. Read, read, read it. He's even mentioned in Josephus. Read Josephus. Josephus, Josephus mentioned Josephus actually wrote accurately. Yeah, well, he, he says, this guy says, Josephus wrote accurately. Well, he mentions John the Baptist. Not being a prophet, though. Oh, he does. Yes, he, does. he does. Who, Josephus? Yes. He said that, that yeah, John yeah, he was respected. Anyway, do you the story? Yeah. Um, Whether you believe in God or you in the middle of the world. Whether he's true. He's still watching. He gave his life. He's gave his life. Thanks for going on, Harry. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. See you soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Are you well? Yeah, yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I lost it for a couple of minutes, but I got it back. Oh, it was me. I didn't realise it was. Um... <laughs> I know it was before then. I was. Oh, sorry. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I got. I...